Hello everybody, my name is Jeff Feltz and I'm with Center Mass Incorporated and I am the inventor of the Patrol Rifle Holster. Uh, since we started marketing this product about a month and a half or so ago, we started getting a lot of questions from officers in the field about uh, certain aspects of, of what you would do in certain circumstances, one of them being uh, rifle retention. So, uh, to answer that question for you, we have brought in a local expert named Joe Ferreira uh, here in Metro Detroit and also uh, widely regarded in uh, the Midwest. So, little Joe, if you want to take it over. Thanks, Jeff. It's great to be here. Thank you. So, obviously, long gun retention has been an issue for tactical teams for many years, but now that the average agency, agency is issuing a, a patrol rifle to most of their officers, uh, and this new device is available, we have to talk about long gun retention for the average patrol officer. Um, the, the difference with PRH is that it attaches the weapon to your body, it's not just the sling. And that means as soon as I grab that weapon, your body's gonna be moving with it. I don't have to get out to the extension of the sling, I can start manipulating your body by grabbing the weapon. So let's talk about some basic long gun retention with PRH and we'll go right to the worst case scenario. We're gonna start with a two-handed attack on your weapon. From here, as I reach out and grab the weapon to, to rip it off his body, Jeff is gonna reach behind my arms, my closest tricep, which is his uh, left arm, it's my right tricep. He's gonna have his forearm against it. He's gonna grab my left tricep, and in a minute, I'm gonna to have to move my thumb so it doesn't get injured. I'm gonna do this because otherwise it's gonna hurt. He's now gonna squeeze my elbows together and lock my arms. You'll notice that pulls me to his left side and away from his handgun side. He's got me locked up here. I was dumb enough to grab with both hands. Now, from this point, he has to make a decision under Graham versus Connor. Does he use deadly force? Does he draw his weapon? We'll talk about that in a minute. Or in this case, he's just gonna initiate some palm strikes to my temple, my jaw, or even better, my brachial plexus, but he's going to do at least two solid blows. His goal is to render me semi-conscious or unconscious. If for some reason that doesn't work, or there are multiple adversaries that could still attack him, now he's going to go to that deadly force option. But first, let's talk about getting me off the gun if those blows work. If the palm strikes work and they render me semi-conscious or unconscious, at this point I'm going to be weak on my feet and all he's going to do is rip me away and get rid of me and create distance. Okay? If those blows don't work or in a circumstance or situation where he has multiple adversaries, there's not a lot of choice here. Besides me being able to get a high-powered rifle, he's got a handgun, maybe a taser, maybe a baton, maybe pepper spray, whatever. He's got a bunch of kit on and he's got to protect all of them. So from here, he has now decided once he is locked in to go to deadly force. He's gonna draw that gun and you'll notice that he goes to my pelvis. You might say, nope, I'm going right to the head. The problem with that is we're face to face. And if he puts that muzzle up in front of my face, he's gonna receive one, a lot of concussion and two, a lot of blowback. There could be body parts, there could be bone matter coming back into his face. Not the best idea. So after he engages that pelvis, puts a couple of rounds in me. Once again, the arms that are locked in, as I start to weaken, he rips my arm away from the long gun and disengages and engages the other threats if those threats exist. Right. So that's the basics of a two-handed attack. Let's look at now a single hand attack on the weapon. And it could be my right hand or my left hand. Most people on the planet are right-handed. It's their dominant arm. On a good day, they'll grab with their dominant arm. Why do I say a good day? That leaves their off hand or their weak hand to attack us. Should they think about it and grab with their weak hand, they now have their strong arm to attack with. In either case, we've got a basic technique for you. And that's all these are today, are basic techniques for you to look at for long gun retention with the PRH. We will start with the dominant hand going to the gun first, okay? Their strong hand, they want their strong hand, they're like, I'm gonna grab that gun. Jeff reaches up, once again, he grabs the tricep and with his forearm and elbow and reaches around and secures the, my arm at my wrist near the base of the gun. You'll see that he's folded his arm around mine and he's fusing my arm to his body again. He's locking me in. If I'm allowed to stay, let my elbow go. If I'm allowed to stay out here and he just grabs my wrist, I can tug all day long and create a problem for him. When he fuses my arm to his chest, now, 
I've got limited range of motion. I can't develop as much power as if my arm were extended. I'm locked in. Once again, should I throw a blow to his head or face, he can stop it. And then we're back to at least two or three solid blows to the temple, the jaw, or the brachial plexus. After those quick blows from here, if I'm weakened, once again, he can rip my hand away from the gun simply by pulling my hand off the butt or the stock of his gun. Should I grab with the left hand? He has his options. He can still grab with his left arm, grabbing my tricep and elbow, and once again, pulling me into the gun. The forward assist, that's all right. That forward assist gets you right on the wrist. It's, it's painful. So from here, I'll cheat and go higher. He grabs and pulls in. I'm, once again, fused to his body. Out here, I can rip all day long. Once he folds my arm in and pulls me in, it changes the dynamics of the confrontation. This hand is free to hit him, but his hand should be hitting me already. Again, the temple, the jaw, the brachial plexus, two quick blows to the head neck area. One, two, and then from here, he simply, as, as I'm weakened, he rips my elbow and arm away from the gun and creates distance, right? In either circumstance with a one-handed attack, should he decide to, he could go to his handgun. A warning about that. If I grab with my right hand and he locks in and he draws his handgun, I can now engage him and this isn't a good situation to be in. I can steer him away from shooting me. If my hand comes over the top and the back of that slide, after that first round, that gun's not gonna cycle and you're not gonna fire more rounds until you tap it in the racket and you're ready to go. On the opposite side, if I grab with my left hand and he locks in, now I can't get to that gun and he can engage if he needs to. This changes the dynamics. So those are considerations when you're training with your PRH and uh, you're talking about a one-handed attack. And of course, we're showing you how to secure the weapon to your body and either render them semi-conscious or unconscious, or if under Graham you decide it's important, go to a deadly force solution to this problem, especially if you have multiple adversaries. So those are the basic considerations for long gun retention. It's not the be all and the end all, it's the starting point. Your agency's instructors should pressure test this and see how you can modify it to best fit your needs. Thanks for watching. One of the questions folks are asking us is, how in the world does this really work? Where does the, the weight of the rifle really get distributed to? So the weight of the rifle actually goes on to the uh, roll pin housing here for the bolt catch, right? So it's not resting on the bolt catch. The bolt catch helps guide the device in, and then all the weight goes onto this forged piece right here. You'd need a sledgehammer to bend that metal. So here's your cutout, right? Imagine that you got a magazine in here, it's hanging on your molly and it comes in, goes down and boom, and it doesn't twist at all, right? So what does that look like without the, the integrated mag pouch on it? It would look like this. It comes in, it goes down, it goes in and it snaps in. This half moon device right here keeps everything from twisting, keeps it all nice and tight. When you want to deploy, it simply bends outward, up and out it goes. All right, a couple more things that we want to make clear uh, for our potential customers is uh, the patrol rifle holster is designed to be used with a good quality two-point sling, not a single point sling, and certainly a rifle with not without a sling. You have to have a two-point sling. Right now, what happens is instead of letting the gun hang or move around and all that weight is on your neck, what happens is when you put the rifle onto the patrol rifle holster. This helps dissipate some of the weight off your neck, making it more comfortable for long periods of time that you have to carry this gun, whatever that might be. You might be standing in a post, you might be working some sort of vessel or uh, crowd control situation, but nonetheless, some of that weight is dissipated from my shoulder, making it more comfortable for your end user. Another question we're, we've been getting asked is, where do I wear the patrol rifle holster uh, on my body. Again, that's a personal preference, but what we're finding is uh, on the gig line, right or left, will work out best. 
I'm a right-handed shooter, so I like it on my right-hand side. It still gives me access to uh, my handgun as well, so I'll go ahead and demonstrate that right now. Good quality two-point sling coming up, and in it goes, and off we go, we're ready to go. Everything's right in front of me. I can control it, um, and it's with me all the time. One of the main questions that we're getting asked is, is the patrol rifle holster ambidextrous? And the, the answer is yes. Now, a mil-spec gun has the uh, bolt catch on the left-hand side of the gun. That's just the way it is. Lefty's been getting screwed for decades now. It is what it is, but they've overcome every single time, and this is no different. Now, what we found is, again, patrol rifle holster on the gig line, if I'm a left-handed shooter, to the left side, right? disregard my right-handed gun it is what it is a trick that we've learned here is to make sure that the sling goes over the outside of the magazine that keeps it from kind of getting tangled up as you have to shift from a right-handed draw into your left-handed shooting position so as the gun comes out and up to the shooting shoulder right there you are everything is in line ready to go now we come back down the holster again lefties you got to switch it back over that right-handed grip down and in it goes, and it's all secure, and it works out great. One of the most frequent questions that we're getting asked about the patrol rifle holster is, does it come as a standalone unit, or do, do you have to use it in conjunction with the patrol rifle integrated magazine pouch? You have to use it currently with the patrol rifle integrated magazine pouch. Now, the patrol rifle integrated magazine pouch, as you see it here, is a duty belt worn um, device that you can hook a taser to or a, a pistol mag pouch, right? And it goes onto this part right here. The belt goes through the belt plate right here. So what we did to make this malleable is we took the fastening clip and we laser cut it and now that slides right into Molly for your Molly external vest, right? Now it'll go on your Molly just like you've seen it in the videos. And now we can do the same thing. We can hang tasers on, etc., or we can uh, provide one with the patrol rifle holster uh, cut out in it, right? And so this is the only way that the device is available right now. In the future, we'll have a standalone device, probably for 2024, but right now you must also get the patrol rifle uh, integrated mag pouch you may already have one we'll be selling conversion kits as well okay so the patrol rifle holster is specifically designed for mil spec bolt catches right so it goes on boom and it's designed for the mil spec bolt catch there are some that are a little bit oversized uh, that it will work with. Um, it's designed for that with this ramp feature here. And there's even an oversized one that's uh, manufactured by uh, Daniel Defense that it works uh, perfectly well with as well. But uh, it may not work for all non-mil-spec bolt catches. The patrol rifle holster is designed to work with mil-spec lowers and uppers. It is. It will not work for some of the billeted manufacturers that are out there. Uh, it will go on here, mil spec, absolutely no problem. But because of this rise right here in the lower, you will notice that it will not go on and down flat uh, on this non mil spec weapon system. So I hope that you have enjoyed these frequently asked questions about this brand new product on the market. It's our job to answer them for you. Um, if you have any other questions, please contact us. Uh, and that would be Mark Boyack at CenterMassInc.com, M-B-O-Y-A-K at CenterMassInc.com for any questions that you may have. Uh, we're seeking uh, dealers, uh, we're taking uh, pre-orders, um, and we're also seeking manufacturers for future uh, editions of the Patrol Rifle Holster. Thank you very much.